Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Joe Brady. I'm just going to be your host today as we uh, have a wonderful special guest with us today. Uh, Sally Winograda is an author, a photographer, a digital artist, a speaker, and a journalist. And really, if you think about it, all this adds up to being a storyteller. She's co-authored eight nonfiction books with her husband, Daniel. She's written hundreds of articles from many trade publications. She's also a novelist, uh, with have her, has her second novel coming out this year. Uh, I understand this in the autumn. Last year, she had her first novel published, JoJo's. And uh, as the, all of this storytelling goes hand in hand with her photography, she's got a wonderful project called American Hands that's combining all her talents. So I'd like to welcome Sally. Uh, Sally, thank you for joining us today. Well, I'm delighted to be here, Joe. And uh, it's been a while since we've actually seen each other in person, so we're going to have to fix that. I would love it. So I'm not going to talk about uh, your, your, your uh, program. I'm going to turn things over to you. I've been very lucky with American Hands. What it is is it's a project in which I go around doing uh, photographs, what I call narrative photographs of people who follow the traditional trades, such as a blacksmith, a uh, spinner, bookbinder. And I follow their entire process, and I capture their story. I do exhibits and lectures. Um, and I write about it, and uh, I will eventually have a book. Uh, because it's been rather successful, I've learned about grants and about organizing a personal project so that it receives the recognition that you need it to receive. Um, so I, uh, I thought I'd share it with you, uh, what I've learned over the years from both my mistakes and my successes. Uh, to date, over 300,000 individuals have actually attended one of my exhibits. That doesn't include all the people who have uh, been to my lectures. I've received dozens of grants. I also have uh, some corporate sponsors. Um, and more than anything, it does give me an opportunity as an artist to grow and to learn and to explore my own creativity uh, and be inspired by other people's creativity. So. Why has American Hands been so successful? It has hit a definite resonant chord in the public. Uh, I don't have difficulty getting exhibit venues. Uh, and though grants aren't easy, I am getting the grants. And the reason is it's been so successful is that it's rooted in storytelling, um, as much of all our photography is. There is a plot line. There is a humanistic element to it so that people can identify with it. Um, so I want to go a little bit into what storytelling, when it's narrative, when it's visual, is, to, uh, to remind all of us that that's what photography really is. Uh, of course, a great story draws us in and wants us to see it through to the end. So uh, uh, one of the t greatest uh, fiction editors I know is Gardner Dozois. Um, you may know him from his t many years at Asimov Science Fiction, but he does a number of anthologies. Brilliant, brilliant editor. He once told me that the, uh, the story form of the 20th century was the soap opera, which is something of a denigration uh, of what it really is. But what it is, it's about human beings and tapping into the way we relate to each other, the way um, we relate to the world. Um, I was just talking with Joe about photographing other people. If we're lucky, when I'm photographing another person, the camera virtually disappears, and it's about a conversation between the two of us. Well, when I'm showing my pictures, I hope I'm bringing my audience into that conversation, into that story. Um, of course, also, we need important uh, points of reference. Uh, things that people can identify, uh, such as here, a tattered American flag. I mean, how many stories can we weave about that one emblem? And uh, the other aspects of story, we all know. Uh, what, mostly what you're trying to do is engage people with whatever it is that makes their mind go a little bit further than where it was originally. Do they have questions for you once they see the pictures? Are you giving them new ideas, a sense of wonder? Are you making them laugh? Are you making them cry? Um, it's 
to be a storyteller is to tap into that with other people. Um, why am I a storyteller? <laughs> when I started to do this slide, the first thing I could, you know, I was brainstorming it with my husband Daniel, and I, I kept saying, I don't know why I am, I just can't help it. I, I just keep weaving stories. I see a scene, uh, I see a child waiting at a bus stop, and I see visual images in my mind, but I also think about, well, what is that child doing? Why are, are those books too heavy for her? Uh, are they just, is she not carrying enough books? Um, all kinds of issues that I can't help. Um, I, but mostly, as I said before, it's how can I, through my camera and through my heart, uh, through my words, how can I be that connection between the subject, between the weaver or that child at the bus stop, or the even the broken down um, wreck of a building that I see along the street? How can I be that connection through my photographs and through my stories between that object or subject and my audience? That is where the heart of our photography lies, is that connection. Um, this slide is really mostly, um, I've used this more for um, people who are just learning photography, so it may be uh, a bit basic for uh, some of you. But it's always good to look back and wonder about what it is when you're looking at possibly doing a project, what it is that drew you into photography, that makes you love photography, what is your passion, and do you see the world in stories? What is it that you want others to come away from your photographs having experienced? And it's an important question to ask yourself before you even start on choosing your subject for your project. Going a bit further into that, um, the, everybody, I don't know a single photographer who doesn't have an idea for a project in their mind, or too many ideas of projects in your mind. Um, and it's important to narrow it down. Uh, when I thought of the combination of the human mind to the human heart, to the human hands. I call that my triad of uh, the, the triangle that makes us human is the connection between our hand, heart, and minds. Uh, so obviously I was thinking of what we do as human beings with our hands. What an enormous subject that was. I had to narrow it down until it was a feasible story. So now it is the story of people who keep the traditional trades alive. So what you need to do is take your story they, the one that you feel intrigues you, and narrow it down and, and find that, that core of what it really means. Uh, and when you go for that, when you're looking for that narrative voice within you, project yourself into, the, into what your viewers would experience. Try to erase your personal uh, investment into it and try to see if they will also be passionate about it. Because that is one of the important keys, is to engage other people's passion. Now, now we get to the business end of it. I and mean, we all have the passion for photography, we all have stories to tell. But frankly, even a personal art project is a business. And you have to develop your project and look at all the business angles of it. The purpose, the duration, logistics, the connection, the communications, the audience and funding. These are all essential pillars, uh, you could say, of the project that's going to keep it going. Of course, as I said, the first thing is your passion and your story. Let's look at purpose first. Um, what I would like you to do is, if you have a project, is to make, take sheets of paper and put all these headers down. Purpose is the first one. And decide what is the purpose. Why are you doing this project? Why? Why do you want to do this project? Write that down. What do you hope will be the result and the effect of the project? In other words, the purpose not just to you, but to your audience, to the world at large, 
uh, is there a injustice that you feel you just have to document? That is an important purpose, but it is, documenting isn't enough. It's perhaps you want to change people's minds. That's a purpose. Why is it meaningful for you? Um, and why would it be meaningful for others? Now, the other two th uh, things I have in this, uh, in this bullet list, will it grow as you move forward? And will you learn and be challenged creatively? Those are two important aspects. You have to seriously look at it within yourself. Because if you don't have those two elements, you're going to get bored by it very quickly. And that's one thing you don't want to ever feel, is bored by your own project. So you want it to grow, and you want to grow through it. Um, I've been on American Hands now for five years. I project that it's going to go on for at least another 10 years, after which I hope to have uh, young people take it over for me, because I believe in it. I have never, ever, ever been bored by it. Uh, the people I meet are so amazing. Both the, um, the, my photo subjects and my audiences have uh, energized me, and uh, creatively, I feel like I'm growing every encounter. I, I discover something new within myself and within the world. That's, that makes it a really meaningful project. The duration, I touched on my sense of duration for American Hands. It's gonna, I would love it to go on after I'm gone. But uh, you have to decide what your duration is uh, because that is going to help you create your the, the real business plan, the financial business plan. Um, is it the long term? Is it going to be just for one year, one month? Are you going away to Canada, to the Yukon for one month and you want to explore old mines there, the derelict old mines, which sounds like a good project to me. Um, that's one month period, great project. Um, a big one that uh, I have not been able to answer is when will you consider the project finished? Because I don't want my American Hands project to ever be finished. There are other projects I've had that I knew that I will have completed it when I had this exhibit or that, uh, that number of pictures or I've captured the entire story of such and such um, to adequately so that I can share it with as many people as possible. And again, uh, I come back to this uh, concept um, frequently because it's important. Is it a subject that will remain exciting and compelling for you through the projected duration? Please be honest with yourself. Once you invest your heart into a project, you don't want to suddenly say, oh, well, that was boring. I'm going to walk away from it before it's completed, especially if you get funding. Uh, you have to, uh, or you have a venue waiting for you. You go into partnership with others. And you can't let them down as well as yourself down. All right. We all have to earn a living. Most personal projects will not earn us money. They're going to cost us money, even with funding. So you need to decide when you will work on your project. I have one day a week when I'm in my studio that I work on American Hands. I make sure that I have um, that day set aside to work on pictures or schedule venues, do press releases, talk to funders. That's an entire day. But for me, as a freelancer, a day is not an eight-hour day. It's more like a 12 to 16-hour day that I will give to American Hands. But then I also know that I have uh, photo shoots scheduled X number of times a month. Um, I have my exhibits. I, I do about uh, six to eight exhibits a year, and um, I'm actually increasing my number of lectures. So I have to fit that into my schedule. How close to home are your story subjects? Now, or locale? That it, you have to be reasonable. I mean, if you want to go up to the Yukon to photograph abandoned mines, part of your business plan is going to have to be the time and the money involved in doing that kind of travel. And you also have to consider all the aspects of that, um, you know, transportation, weather, and such. For instance, going up to the Yukon, if, it's, if you have an unseasonable uh, snowstorm, how is that going to affect the project? You have only 
four weeks there, are you going to be able to complete it if you lose five days to weather? Communications is uh, important throughout the project. Uh, I'm pretty good at public relations PR, getting press releases out there, getting, um, I use constant contact to, uh, for mailing. Um, we also use uh, web, uh, PR web to send uh, press releases out. Um, and of course our own, um, my, I shouldn't say our, my own uh, mailing list. But um, so you really have to uh, put aside time for communications. But beyond that, you need to think about how are you going to communicate with people who have control over your locales? Or how are you going to meet the people that you're going to photograph? Who do you know who knows who knows who knows? Um, well, you need special permission. Uh, when I got to photograph in Stonehenge, it took me about um, two weeks before my trip to uh, England to get permission to photograph there. Well, this was a couple of decades ago. I don't know if you can still do it. I had Stonehenge to myself at dawn so that uh, there, was, there were no tourists there, no bu nothing, just me, uh, my husband, and the sun rising. Well, that takes time to get that kind of permission. Um, one of the things that you want, might want to consider is developing your network of people who can help you before you um, need to go photograph. Social media really helps with that, but also just getting on the phone and talking to people. Uh, talk to fellow photographers, talk to, uh, talk to politicians. If uh, perhaps uh, you're talking about state parks and you want to be able to be sure that you have no problem getting into historic locations in those state parks, talk to your state representative. He or she will be very interested in helping. And I already addressed how you spread the word. Uh, you do need a PR um, plan as part of your project. This is my dad, by the way, at my uh, one of my American Hands exhibits. This was at Muhlenberg College, where I am an alum. And uh, I had a rather uh, early exhibit of American Hands there. Um, you have to decide before you even start the project. Who is the audience of your project? And are you going to exhibit? Are you going to do uh, slideshow presentations? Are you going to do a book? You need to make your decision on that very, very early on, not just for your own sake in doing your business plan, but if you are going to uh, go for funding, you need to define this clearly. Um, but think about who your typical audience is. Uh, are they? Um, and think about the ideal person, somebody you know. Um, make it a single individual in your head. Who is that person? Where would they go to look at your pictures? How would they like to interact with your pictures? Think about that person, and that will help you decide. Now, my venues vary very widely because I like going out to the public. I feel that uh, American Hands is a type of art that People who would not go to museums or galleries such as this one, or um, people who maybe never have never been to a museum, would be interested in. So I go a lot to small libraries, big libraries. I go to community centers, schools, elementary schools. Um, I, I even had an exhibit in an indoor shopping mall because I wanted to take the art to the public audience and. Uh, develop a um, energized conversation about the traditional trades and what they can mean for us as we go forward. That there are manual skills that may be necessary for the way we develop our minds in the 21st century. Now we get to the big one. How are you going to fund this? Now these three things, credit cards, family, sales. That's the way most people initially fund personal projects, quite frankly. Uh, except sales are usually minimal. Uh, there are those who are lucky to get a lot of money for their pictures. 
um, or uh, can get books, uh, a good good book deal if you have a great name. Uh, books often don't even pay for themselves. Uh, those of you who have done books will know that. Um, I, I'm talking about photo books, that is. But the real money is from corporations and from grants, from getting corporate sponsors and for applying for grants. Uh, this uh, image are just some of the grants I've had, some of the corporate sponsors I had. Uh, one important logo, which is this one right here, the Artspire NIFA logo. Um, American Hands is actually fiscally sponsored by NIFA. What that means is that um, American Hands is under their 501c3 nonprofit umbrella, and donations to American Hands is, are tax deductible. And um, they are managed, administered by one of the most respected arts organizations in the country. NIFA does not give me money, does not help me get money, but they do give a very nice imprint of respectability to American Hands. Um, okay, so grants are the next issue that is the biggie. I'm going to spend a bit of time here on the on this slide, but. Um, I've also done an entire YouTube video on understanding the grant game. Uh, the URL is right here. I'll also make sure that Joe has a, the URL so that it will be in the email that you'll receive. Um, grants are intimidating. It took me three years to finally get up the courage to write a grant proposal. And I'm a writer, but I didn't know how to go about it. Uh, and I had friends who run who administer grants, who are willing to help me. So I recognize that it can be difficult. Start locally. I live in Pennsylvania, and Pennsylvania has a, a wonderful program called Partners in the Arts, which is um, administered by uh, the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts through local arts councils. Um, many, many states have these kinds of programs. Um, and they will have free workshops. I, not just the small arts councils, not just your state art council, but there are quite a few uh, foundations and grant givers who have free workshops and you can go and you can talk to people and you can learn a heck of a lot about how to go about getting, uh, filling out a grant. Um, there was a wonderful workshop that I missed because I had another op uh, obligation down in Philadelphia this Monday uh, from the Leeway Foundation. They, uh, I would love to, I hope I uh, get to one of their workshops soon. So I'm, I'm now a veteran at writing grant applications, but I still go to these workshops because you need to understand what they are looking for and um, what are the specifics. For instance, in PCAs and uh, the Pennsylvania Council of the Arts, Partners in the Arts, they, they require that there be a public component, such as a uh, exhibit or lecture that anybody in the public can attend. That's an important core element. And if you don't have that, they're going to turn you down immediately. So read the instructions carefully. Um, and we get back to storytelling. If you Intrigue the people who are reading the grant application with a good story, they're going to keep reading. They're going to go, oh, this sounds interesting. I'd like to see this exhibit. I'd like to hear these stories. Um, I've actually been a juror on a grant, um, a grant committee, uh, selecting who would get them. And it was fun to read some of the grant applications. Others were painful. Please have somebody edit it. Even if you're a professional writer, especially if you're a professional writer, you know that editors are necessary for anything you write. Have somebody who is not too close to the project edit it, make sure the language flows, you don't have major grammatical mistakes, uh, and that you answer the questions, exactly the questions they ask. You can go ahead and give more information than what they ask, but be sure to answer the questions they ask. Um, and even if there aren't workshops, don't be shy. 
You can send emails or even sometimes call the office of the grant giver. And they will answer questions. Uh, you can say, um, look, I want to buy a new camera. Can that be covered by this grant? Some will have capital uh, equipment as a, a legal uh, line item in your grant proposal. Others will say absolutely not. Just as uh, some will say it is OK to have um, to pay for food for reception, others absolutely not. But if you ask questions, you won't make those mistakes. Uh, as I said, the grant application portion is um, that's a big, big story. So I didn't want to uh, give it all to uh, this. It's spend too much time on grants in this uh, in this uh, webinar. I want to give you a taste of how to go about it. Uh, one of the big resources that you should look at are the, is the Foundation Center. Um, uh, they have uh, they have uh, libraries, computers all over the country. It costs money to access the database if you do it remotely, but they have centers all over the country where you can go in, usually into a public library and access the database. Great resource for finding where the grant givers are. Well, that's the basics of uh, what I, I wanted to leave enough time to answer any questions you might have about this. These are, I, I'm always happy to answer questions directly too. Um, so please feel free to get in touch with me. And I hope this has been useful. Uh, Joe, do we have any questions? We do, Sally, th and thank you for that, by the way. Um, now, I'm sure there's going to be people that have even maybe a lot more questions than uh, um, we could even have time to go into detail. People are going to be curious about some of the specifics about who these people that the grant givers are. So uh, maybe perhaps when we do our follow-up, you could give me a uh, some kind of link or inf information that I could direct people. Here's where you go look. I, I gather most of the places that you're doing grants with are, are organizations, possibly mostly privately funded or publicly funded. When you, mm -hmm. how do you approach a corporation if you're looking for a grant, like somebody like HP you mentioned? Which maybe department might you go to? That's a difficult question. I always did it through personal contacts. I have to admit that uh, all these corporations know my work and know me personally. Um, being a journalist has always been a help uh, because I've, I've known these companies, I've followed their work for a long time. Um, I would say probably go on their website and first see if they have a, uh, a art funding um, a, a branch. Many, many corporations do have uh, somebody who gives away money to the arts or to the public. Uh, if you can't find that, I would say maybe start with the director of communications. Uh, that's uh, because they they know a lot of people. Okay. So and all, and ask people who ask who know people. Networking is amazing. It's one of the best resources we have. Absolutely. For those of you that are out there and looking to pursue something like this, uh, do understand that it's relationship building and as in everything else. So uh, you got to get out there. You got to press the flesh. You got to meet people and you got to talk to people. Absolutely. Nobody's going to come knocking on your door and say, would you like some money? <laughs> oh, please, please, yes. somebody knock on my door. <laughs> um, how about marketing? After you've got the project uh, pretty much along its way and you're ready to have it presented in, in the public, uh, what do you find is the most effective ways of marketing to get the word out and get eye eyeballs on what you're doing? I do take control over the uh, marketing and the PR because I feel that I can tell my story better than anybody. I do have two employees who help me get the word out, but they're very often I will write templates for them to use in their emails and their phone calls, and I, I indoctrinate them in my vision for American Homes. Um, the first thing I do is I make sure that the venue manager has everything he or she needs. Um, I write a press release that they can uh, send out. I provide posters and flyers to them. Um, that, I have never yet found a venue that will allow me to have their uh, email database. So I also create an email for them to send out for me, inviting people to the uh, exhibit, the lecture, 
or the um, I also give workshops in conjunction with uh, uh, photography uh, and uh, storytelling workshops in conjunction with American Hands. Um, <clears throat> then I have uh, three other things that I use. As Joe, you said, relationship building. I have been building relationships with followers for years now. Um, I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook. You can find me there very, very easily. I, it's both Sally Wiener Grata and American Hands on Facebook. On uh, Google Plus, it's Sally Wiener Grata. On Twitter, it's Sally W. Grata with a hashtag American Hands. I make that, I, I, I'm out there frequently. And what I often do, actually, um, David Saffer, the photographer, a very fine photographer and a good pal of mine, suggested something very early on to me that made so much sense. He said, photographers may be in competition with each other, but more, we're really partners with each other. And if we can help each other. So he believes, and I believe very strongly, in letting and in, in supporting other photographers' PR efforts. And that grows the uh, network. Um, I have a mailing list. I, I have a contact uh, page uh, on my website so that people can add my, um, join my uh, mailing list and let me know what kinds of things they're interested in. The website is amhands, A-M-H-A-N-D-S dot com. You go to the contact page, you'll see a a uh, contact page that's created using WUFO, W-U-F-O-O dot com uh, forms. Very, very useful to maintain that database. Um, I use constant contact to send out emails because I have so many contacts that if I try to send it out through email, a lot of servers will block it. I mean, you send out a thousand emails to people, it looks like spam. But everybody in my email list have opted in. So um, I, I don't feel guilty about it. I just need to get it past those servers. <laughs> AOL is famous for blocking uh, all kinds of things, even constant contact. So I use constant contact, very, very useful service, not that expensive to maintain. Uh, I send out press releases through it, but I also send out um, announcements to my fans and to my friends and family through it. Uh, and then I have opted into uh, PR Web. Uh, PR Web is a professional uh, service for sending out press releases cold. I do not believe that journalists pay much attention to PR Web. I certainly don't as a journalist. But what it does is it gets your press release picked up on the web throughout the internet. And I am looking at Google Analytics on my website. I'm impressed by how large a percentage of new people to my website come from uh, a PR web uh, press release. So uh, obviously, uh, the other data part of my database, I should have said, is that I have developed contacts among the press, which is important. Always researching who the press are of the local press for wherever the exhibit of the lecture is and contact, I have my assistants contact them directly. So like with any other kind of marketing effort, it's a matter of getting eyeballs on what you're doing. Yes, yes. And it's a large project, a large thing just to do PR. Absolutely, I know what you mean. Uh, call, I have a two-part question that actually comes through uh, two of the viewers, so one from Cheryl and then uh, one from Marissa. And they're asking about when you're doing your budgets, do you know of any resources uh, to help determine a budget for your project, and should you have your uh, marketing expenses or proposed expenditures in that uh, that budget? Every single per every single workshop that you will go to about a grant or uh, a fellowship, one of the first line items they tell you put in is the artist fee. Nobody expects the artist to work for free. That's the fee to you as the photographer. That's the first line item. It should not be too high a percentage of the total budget, though. And uh, people have varied on what percentage it should be. Um, I get antsy with mine is above 25%, but I may be conservative on that. 
what is allowed on the budget uh, as, as far as grants goes versus what is on your budget as a business are two different things. When you write your budget as a business, it is an income outgo typical business budget. You need to put in all your expenses that you project and see if you can cover them and how you're going to cover them. That's how you run a business. It's a real business plan. With a grant application, you don't put in your entire budget. You put in that part of the budget that the grants will allow you to cover with their money. And um, any income that you can apply specifically to that granted portion of the project. For instance, a lot of grants are for a very specific exhibit at one location. So therefore, I don't. I put in my mileage for photo shoots that will be new photo shoots specifically to be exhibited at that um, exhibit, and not all of my mileage of the year. If that helps explain the difference between the two budgets. Yeah. So it's basically as if you were preparing your own budget for your uh, for your accountant for taxes. You need to put. Every, you have to figure out everything's going to cost and all your ins and all your outs. Exactly. Uh, and uh, by the way, for a grant budget, uh, there are quite a few online examples. Um, and we're just about out of time, so uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, well, one last question, actually. And when you do have your exhibit in a live place, uh, do you ever include any of the live craftspeople with your exhibit? I have wanted to do that several times. And um, the venue, uh, no venue has jumped on it with me yet. Because, um, of course, the venue manager decides to the extent that they will, are willing to do. It would be done during the opening reception or the artist talk or the gallery talk. I would love to do that. Um, and uh, one of these days, I'm going to find a venue that's adventurous and wants to do that. All right, I'm just checking. It seems to be about it. So again, for everybody that that has been here, there's a, a lot of folks have some detailed questions about, you know, finding grants, who these people are, uh, kind of the process. So. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, so I'll, I'll talk to Sally after we're done, and I'll make sure to get you the links for places that you can start doing that kind of research. Because uh, it sounds like there's some people that are interested in pursuing some projects that are similar to what you've accomplished. So that's it for today. Uh, Sally, thank you so much. It's great to hear from you. I uh, hope to see you again soon. That would be great, and thank you, everyone, for your interest. Thank you all for joining. Hope to see you guys online again soon. Until then, everybody keep shooting and be well. Bye-bye.